Igniting, inspiring, and evoking the fire within. Because I play the piano, I've been teaching myself since like January. So I was like, you know what? I always wanted to write some songs. Let's see if I can do that. And may the Lord find the sun. So for me, that's, you know, every song's different. You know, some songs take 10 minutes to write, some take a few days to write. You know, it's just every day, you know, I always have a to-do list every day of everything I have to do, whether it's a homework assignment, whether it's, you know, a workout, or whether it's, you know, you know working on my screenplays and the music, you know, I'll sit down and go, tonight I want to try and generate some sort of idea for a new song. It's more about making sure each song counts. Show you the ropes, cause the world is your playground I take this to heart you know I know I am far from a genius I'm far from perfect you know none of us are I call you young genius (laughs) but if I can just be good you know not even if I can just be good if I can say hey I gave it my all today I'm trying my best what else is there to say? You're listening to the What's Your Inspiration podcast with Fox Buyer. On episode 23 of the What's Your Inspiration podcast, we have my cousin Barbara Baxter. She is a retired probation officer from the state of New Jersey who enjoys helping others. She's got a passion for the outdoors and enjoys the beach, boating, windsurfing, skiing, and weight training. This will be a blast. Here we go. Hello and welcome to episode 23 of the What's Your Inspiration podcast. Today, a very special guest on. To some, she's Barb. To others, she's Barbara Jean. She's Auntie Beanie. Bean, I know her as Bean, my cousin, Bean Baxter. How are you today? I am well. How about you? Well, as we discussed before, it's it's morning, and to some people it's a good morning, and to some it's not. But like I told you, if I were any better, I couldn't stand it. And I'm right alongside you with that. <laughs> I'm sure you are. First question, Bean. Uh, you spent 32 years as a probation officer here in the state of New Jersey. You told me at a family gathering last year, last uh, Christmas Eve, that... You had become so comfortable in your job that walking through a jail cell was what it felt like for most walking through a mall. How did you become so comfortable doing that? You know, Fox, it's sort of hard to explain. It's just like I remember the first time I walked into the jail and, you know, my blood pressure was up. I was full of anxiety. You know, you walk in and the door closes behind you. And then you see, you know, in the population, people walk in the halls. But then I realized they're just people. They're the same as you and I. They just fell into unfortunate circumstances and engaged in some criminal activity that landed them there. But I always remembered that they were still people. And you have no idea of knowing that if you're out in the mall or out in the grocery store, that the person standing behind you wasn't it recently in jail. So you just conduct yourself in the jail like you would go about your business outside the jail, and then it just becomes normal. Yeah, you, you, you definitely said it. I mean, you, you, we don't, you, you don't know what a, what, a, what a person's gone through, and that's, that's a great point. I mean, I, I'm almost speechless at this point. I think back to... Um, a time, this is a couple years ago, coaching in Somerset. And we had a player who whose dad is uh, Todd Rundgren, a uh, rock singer, and and he was in the stands. And, you know, just not, not knowing who he was, I asked our manager, I said, Brett, who's that? He goes, Fox, that's Rex's dad. And you just, yeah, you just don't know. You have you have no idea, but yeah, people are people. I like that. I like the humility in, in in the answer there. That's a good start. Thanks, Fox. You you bet. You bet. You um, you retired last month after thirty two years on the job. What are you going to miss most? Ah, uh, 
you know, it's strange. Like, first you think you're going to miss the people, you know, being it the, you know, co-workers and or, you know, the customers, as I always like to refer to my defendants, as opposed to defendants. I thought customers had a better ring to it. Yes. Um, but then, you know, I, I think I just missed the challenge of solving problems for other people and the, you know, the ability to make somebody have a better day, maybe the parent of an individual who got theirself in trouble, and, you know, lead them through the system and guide them accordingly. But, you know, at some point in time, you have to, you know, take a look inside at yourself and say, how much more can I do here? Or is there something else that I should be looking forward to at this point in time? And I just came to the decision that, you know, it was time to move forward to another chapter of my life. What are you looking forward to most in this next chapter? You know, something new, a new challenge. Uh, you know, finding some simpler task, you know, that, you know, gives me passion. Um you know, I'm very happy working with my hands, very happy around people. Um, so, you know, some kind of, you know, customer service, you know, somewhere where I get to spend some time with people, but, you know, not in such a structured environment as the court system. Something with a little bit more freedom. You know, I, I yeah. know you... I know you as someone outside of, of your previous job that even outside you challenged yourself and you've challenged yourself in the water, on the mountain, in the gym. I mean, you, you your other passions to me, I know, are, are windsurfing and the beach, skiing and weight training. And I wanted to dig into those for a minute. The, the first thing I want to reflect on is windsurfing in the beach. So... I know within hours of your retirement last month in October, you found yourself on a beach. And as an avid windsurfer, you told me another story at a family gathering that it's it's October, years ago. And you're windsurfing, and you find yourself with a cut on your foot. It's bleeding, and you're, you're standing on a sandbar. And you look out in the water, and what's the first thing that you see? A shark fin. A shark fin. And, and what was the first thought that went through your head? I'm going to die. <laughs> oh, heck. Oh, it was awful. Absolutely, positively awful. I remember looking up, looking down at the blood coming out of my ankle, seeing the fin in the water, probably a brown shark. Wasn't going to harm me, but it didn't make a difference to me at that point in time. So I got back on my board, my heart was pounding, and I just held on for dear life and flew across the top of the water, ran the board right up onto the beach, put my stuff in the car, and I said, I'm done with this. And how long after did you go back out windsurfing? Uh, I think it was the following weekend, but I was still relatively nervous, but once you you know, you get into the sailing aspect of it, you know, you sort of forget about seeing that fin and then you move on. But, you know, like I always said to my friends, they're like, do you scuba dive? I said, absolutely not. I have no interest in seeing what's underneath that water, given all the time I spend in the water. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's so true. I, like my, my mother, you, you know her. She, uh, yeah. she she loves the water, but she does not want to know what's below her. So when she, when she swims or goes in the ocean, she never puts her feet uh, on the bottom. She's always floating. Well, I can certainly understand that. I'm not a big fan of that, but, you know, most of the time if I do walk on the water, I do have booties on because I am a little bit of a chicken myself. <laughs> I, I beg to differ with that in other, in other aspects, but I mean, you, you don't know what you don't see, so it makes sense. True. It makes sense. All right, so 
job, profession, uh, windsurfing. How about skiing? You've been all over the world skiing. Where is your favorite place to ski? Hands down, Vail, Colorado. And why? The mountain has the the mountain has the absolute best terrain and something to offer everybody at every level. So say you go with a group of five or six people, and not everybody's going to be on the A team or the B team, so to speak, and that's what we used to call it. <laughs> but everybody can ski on the mountain and still find their way back to a mutual place that everybody can meet for lunch. I mean, it's just the terrain is vast. The views are spectacular. The snow is pristine. It just, there's never a bad day in Vail, Colorado. From what, from what I heard, there, there's definitely not. And even when you were driving back to the airport, I remember you telling me a story uh, going back to the airport in, in Denver and, and looking ahead of you, it was this, this pack of animals. And, and weren't they caribou? Uh, they were actually, from what I could deduce, they were elk. Elk, excuse me. There must have me. been 15 or 20 of them on the side of the road. First from afar, it was like a black sort of vision. And then it dawned on me, oh my gosh. And I was like, uh, you know, said to my mother and my two nephews in the car, just everybody get ready. And I sort of slid to the left lane, and I was just like, oh, God, please, let's get past this. And by the grace of God, they didn't come across the road. How, how I mean, you got obviously very, very close to them. Can you give anybody an idea who hasn't seen elk before how big they are? Well, let's just say I was in a Suburban, and they looked like they were taller than the Suburban, and, you know, I would say better than half the length of the Suburban, they are gigantic creatures. Good gracious. Good gracious. As speaking of gigantic creatures, I was telling my brother, Billy, who recommended you for this podcast uh, yesterday. Oh, I gotta love him for that. <laughs> he, <laughs> he, uh, I was telling him a story, again, big creatures. I was at the University of Georgia playing against Georgia baseball in college. And Goldberg, the wrestler, is a UGA graduate. And on a Sunday when we were playing them in Athens, he was throwing out the ceremonial first pitch. And, and my friend Stuart, another coach on the team, uh, looks at Goldberg and jokingly and says, Hey, Goldberg, this guy over here thinks he can kick your ass. And he's pointing at me. And somehow or another, they knew each other. The guy walks up to me, and I don't know where to look. He's, he's, he looks like an elk. I mean, he's just monstrous. And he, he picks me up like he's going to body slam me. And I'm laughing so hard, my body is, like, convulsing, and I'm all rigid. And he, like, doesn't slam me now, puts me down on his knees to say, I could have chopped you in half. So, <laughs> what, 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 well, I haven't seen elk up close. I can, uh, I can sympathize with your feelings. You got it. For sure. For sure. Man. Um, and, and, and back to the skiing part, too. You mentioned A and B team. Um, if I think if I were on a ski team, I'd be on the F-plus team. And just to share this story about you and, and me skiing, I haven't skied since I was probably about 13. And uh, I, leave, I leave a little bit to be desired as a skier. And you, you knew that. And you knew I couldn't really experience the things that most skiers did. So like at the age of whatever it was, 10 or 11, you, you grabbed me on the mountain, put me between your skis, and we, we, we flew down the mountain. And that was the one time in skiing I felt like an athlete. That was, that was certainly one day. I was like, I am going to get this kid to experience what it's like to feel the snow beneath your skis and to get those speeds. And I remember that. I just came behind you, picked you up, and you laughed the whole way down. <laughs> you were like, this is epic. It was. You know, certainly, yeah, certainly it was a struggle for you. I mean, I remember my dad trying to devise 
set of skis that would keep your tips apart. I mean, we certainly gave it the college try of trying to get you to experience it. You did. You, you know, you probably should have said to us all, seriously, look at me. You know, how am I going to do this creatively? But we, we tried. We didn't give up for a lot of years. Yeah, I mean, it's not like we tried it once and stopped. I mean, we there... The, the fact that your dad kept trying to devise ways new, it just showed us we had a chance. There was a chance, and, and um, I guess after a while I just didn't choose to pursue it, but, but uh, I, I felt the pinnacle when, when, you, when you took me down the mountain, so it's all good. I'm glad you got to experience it, Fox, because, you know, it's something that, you know, is sort of in our family. It is. It's it's embedded, embedded. Those those trips, uh, the the times, the experiences, and the places. Yeah, it's 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 always a part of family conversation wherever we are together. No question about it. No question. Oh, and a lot of good times and a lot of laughs. <laughs> oh, there's there's so many. We could actually have an interview that just focuses on that. I mean, and and that's. Oh. That, that would go on forever. It would. And, and most of it would be stories that have nothing to do with skiing. <laughs> exactly. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Man, well, we will, uh, we will not digress. We will go into weight training uh, with, with you, one of, one of your other passions. I mean, to be honest, and I, I'm, I'm going to brag for you a little bit, okay? You look like you're about 32 years old. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say that you've worked 32 years uh, as a probation officer, but you, you yet look like you're 32 years old because you take such good care of yourself. And when I asked my brother Billy what his secret was for keeping himself in shape, he said consistency. What is your secret? I think it's you know. Like Billy says, there's a there's a level of consistency, but I think for me it's desire and discipline. You know, it's the desire to continue to stay active, to engage in, you know, the sports that I was able to do at, you know, fifteen and twenty and twenty five, you know, to stay active. You know, and you need that discipline to do that. You know, I can't certainly sit on the couch all week long and then expect to go ski down a double black diamond. That's an unrealistic expectation. But if I go in the gym and I work on legs, which is my absolute least favorite. <laughs> Mine too. Oh, it is just, it's just not fair just not fair. They hurt too much. But then I'm capable of skiing down a double black diamond because I have prepared myself. You know, I, I like to stay, you know, active for me because it makes you feel better. Like somebody once said to me, and I don't think it was your brother, Billy. It might've been another friend of mine that, you know, Lifting weights is like discovering the fountain of youth. It keeps you young, you know, in body and in mind. You know, it pushes you to limits. It, you know, creates mental toughness. You know, and without that, you can't do so many other things. You can't. And, and it uh, makes you think of Muhammad Ali. I I'm, love the guy because he said, you know, he, he, he hated training, but he, he loved fighting so much and competing. He knew he had to train, and he really, when he trained, for example, when he did sit-ups, he didn't count sit-ups until they hurt because he felt like that's when he was getting somewhere. And I feel like that's how you approach your your training for for um, to keep your body in shape for windsurfing for skiing whatever it is. Right, I I push myself, you know, pretty darn hard, just so that I can do the things that I enjoy. And you know, if 
I do have a trainer. And if my trainer says, uh, you know, we're going to do uh, bicep curls, I'm like, what, what weight? He's like, you pick. I'm like, all right, let's take the 25 today. He's like, oh, good choice. You know, I'm not looking for the easy way out. You know, if I think, oh, maybe I want to do 30s today, but I'm not sure. I'm willing to give the 30s a shot to see if I can do it. If I can't do it, I put it back and I take the lower one. Right, you, know, you, don't, you I, don't beat yourself up for it. No, you, you, you got to try. There is no failure. It's just, you know, it's not my time to lift that weight yet. Maybe the next time. Got you. Got you. And, and, and it's, you can see how in your life it's, it's helped you enjoy other things um, more. Like you, 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 do, you referenced. You know, the harder you work in the, in the weight room, the more you get to enjoy the things you love, like skiing, like windsurfing, and various other activities. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Absolutely. You know, just being able to go out and work in the yard, you know, bending over. So many people have difficulty with simple tasks, but it all boils down to your level of fitness. And how bad you want it. And the time you're going to put in to, to do those things. Amen to that. B, this has gotten very serious. Oh, too serious. Then. Let's <laughs> lighten it up. Let's light, let's light it up a little bit with a little game called, called What, Which, and Where. And being as a frequent listener, I know you are familiar with this game, correct? Oh, I think I am. I will do my best to succeed. <laughs> yes, I, you, you certainly will. So I'll mention a quote. It could be a quote from a movie, a person, uh, a line from a song, and you just tell us from where it came. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay, here we go. Question, quote, number one. Quote, did you like the opera, dear? Quote, it was good. I peed my pants. I'm absolutely clueless. You're you're definitely not clueless. I, I'll I'll say it again. It's it, part of a conversation between two people. One says the, the first person says, "Quote, did you like the opera, dear?" And the next person says, "It was so good. I peed my oh, pants." Geez. I am so ridiculous. That is from Pretty Woman. You you are absolutely correct. One for one. Uh, and and the next question I would have for that uh, main, main character in the movie or main actress is Julia Roberts. And if you took a, a car ride with Julia Roberts, what's one question you would ask her? One question I would ask Julia Roberts in a car ride. Yes. How, how do you know so much about cars? <laughs> <laughs> okay, F fair enough. Fair enough. See, you're not somebody that would that would that would just take car rides. You'd be on the mountain, or maybe I, I should have rephrased that. If you were windsurfing with Julia Roberts, one what's one question you would ask? What's that fin in the water? Um, okay. <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. Um, reflecting on your other passions, question num number two. This is a quote from a, or a line from a song. Quote, trucks in park, the dog won't bark, couple hours till dark, wishing one would walk by. Meaning, the one meaning a deer. I don't know, Fox. Where are you coming up with this? Well, I think I think you know this as an avid country music fan and concert goer. Did you go to the Google and find this stuff. Well, I, I, I didn't, I'll tell you what I didn't Google this because one of our players years ago had this as his walk-up song. I'll say it again. No. Here's the quote: "The trucks in park, the dog won't bark. Couple hours till dark, wishing one would walk by." You got me. On that one. Okay, so it's a, a, a country singer, and I'm, 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 I would say seventy-five percent sure you've either you, you've seen him in concert. Hmm. 
I'll give it to you. It's Luke Bryan. Very good. You got me on that one. Okay. Have you been to one of his concerts? Well, I've been to too many of his concerts. Ah, okay. So... Yes, but I don't know every single song. That's okay. That's not the name of the song. The name of the song is Drinking Beer and Wasting Bullets. Oh, well, you know, I don't drink any beer. <laughs> anything to do with bullets. I mean, no, absolutely That's not. If I do like beer, I I, I enjoy a, a beverage of that kind as well. So so okay. So the next time you hear it, you'll say, "That's that doggone quote that Fox asked me in the interview." So there you I go. Certainly will. Okay. Now now you're seeing a trend here. So I'm reflecting. I'm reflecting on some of your passions and and this next quote. I'll say you you know this person very well. It's from a song. It goes like this: Never pass state inspection, but you've got any man's affection. Gears that grind and plates that read mine, mine, mine. Who said that? Or who wrote that? Uh. No fuck. Where did you get this stuff? <laughs> I got it just to stump you, um, but but you you know this person very well. In fact, you are talking to him right now. You from one of your letters, kindling. But it comes from the book Letter Kindling, and it's actually made into a song, and the song is called Mighty Max. It's about a truck. Oh, that's right, Mighty <laughs> Max. Mighty Max. So maybe we'll. Uh, do you mind if I play part of it? Can I can I plug myself? This is kind of vain, but um, absolutely plug yourself. So so why don't we take a moment and listen to part of Mighty Max? Let's see if we can hear it. On the side of the road, rusty hitch. Can you hear it? I certainly can. Now here it comes. So there you go. There's the there's the line from from Mighty Max uh, coming to a I don't want to say coming to a store near you, but you, they, they don't have stores anymore. It's all iTunes and downloads and concerts. So maybe somebody will pick that up. Who knows? That's true. That's true. What, what anything you, is possible in this world. Anything is possible. What do you think of the song? I think it's got you know I think it's got some heart to it, Fox. I think you know. Maybe, you know, we could get that out there to somebody, you know, who knows, maybe Luke Bryan might find some interest in that. Mm -hmm. You know, we just got to set you up with the right people. That's right. That's right. Next thing you know, he might he might appear on the jukebox in Leggett's in, in, in Manasquan. And who the heck knows? Who the heck knows? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> who the heck knows? Okay. So uh, that that is the end of what, which, and where you, you could exhale now. Oh, that wasn't very easy. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll end up this way uh, with, with the discussion about heroes. We know not all heroes wear a cape. You listed your sister, Terry, as one of your heroes. I wanted to ask you, what is the best piece of advice Terry ever gave you? best piece of advice Terry ever gave me was always take the high road. Mm -hmm. Always mm -hmm. take the high road. And, you know, I say it so often to so many people. And they always say to me, you and your high road. I said, well, my sister always said, take the high road. You know, walk away. Pick and choose your battles. You know, is it really worth it? Just take the high road. That was, you know, how pretty much she lived her life. She took the high road. And I, you know, if I don't hear that in my head once a day, I hear it 20 times a day. 
just take the high road. I got to tell you, I, I needed to hear that too. And it's phrased in so many ways, but I think that's short, concise, you know, stay away from people that are, that, that drain you from, uh, drain energy out of you that are jealous or envious or that you just don't want to be around. The, the answer is just to walk away. Amen to that. Amen is the correct word. Amen is the correct word. So, uh, yep, uh, uh, four letters, amen. I like it. Taking the high road. That should be the title of the podcast, title of your interview. Outstanding. Bean. Thank you, Fox. You betcha. The, the, the last uh, part of the interview, I wanted to ask you if anybody um, wants to get in touch with you, if you wanted to share, how can they do that? Uh, they could get a hold of me at my email address, which is uh, bjbax at aol.com. Outstanding. And final question, who would you like to hear on an upcoming podcast? Oh, I have thought about this. <laughs> I couldn't be happier that you asked me this question. Because the person I think you need to talk to next is a dynamic young individual. And his name would be Jimmy Soldati. Jimmy Soldati. A recent graduate, recent college graduate of Washington University in St. Louis. And I Absolutely. think that is a perfect answer. I think the young man could be the pres of the U.S. if he wanted to be, for crying out loud. And I am right alongside you there. That is one driven young boy. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Jimmy Soldati coming on a pod, to a podcast, coming on our podcast very soon. Thanks, Fox. You bet you. This has been an absolute blast. Bean, thanks for coming on. You got it. You take care of yourself. I will. You do the same. This will wrap up episode 23 of the What's Your Inspiration podcast. Bean and I will talk at you all later. Take good care. You have been listening to the What's Your Inspiration podcast with Fox Buyer. Because impact on each other is the greatest currency you could ever have. been told keys barely fit into the ignition passenger seat two inch incision never passed state inspection but worth any man's affection gears that grind plates that read my 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 Passenger seat, two-inch incision. Never passed state inspection, 
to worth any man's affection. Gears that grind, plates that read, mine, mine.